Since 2010, Winnipeg's Cluster Festival has been engaging and entertaining Winnipeggers in thoughtful and groundbreaking presentations of integrated arts that make use of dance, sound exploration, art, and video all fused together. Featuring artists of today's generation, the festival, which happens at a variety of venues around Winnipeg, displays the new vistas that artists are exploring, all the while encouraging audience members to think, live, and feel their surroundings. This year's festival started on May 31st and goes until June 9th. And here to tell us more about Cluster 2024, I am joined by Ashley Au, who is the Artistic Director of Cluster. Hey, Ashley, nice to have you here. Hey, thanks for having me. Mm. Happy to be here. Uh, first of all, uh, you and I, and I have known each other for many years now. When did you become the Artistic Director of Cluster? And how has your time been with uh, the Cluster Festival so far? Well, I uh, began my work with Cluster Festival in April 2020. Um, I was meant to be just kind of like the new artistic director show ponying around at the, the festival in March 2020, but we all know what happened there. Mm. So I was kind of thrown into the thick of it and then quickly, you know, started revamping the programming, trying to adjust to that temporary state of lockdown. And then at 2020. Uh, 2022, I believe, was when we did like our first like full like kind of back to mm. regular business type festival. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that work since then, and I've been really enjoying doing it. Yeah, and just sort of navigating through COVID and that whole Michigas. Oh yeah, that was <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> hectic. <laughs> uh, when I found out you were the artistic director of Cluster, I thought she's perfect. Uh, uh, I was doing an interview a while ago with Prairie Theatre Exchange, and I discovered you were doing some work with them. Uh, you coordinate a biopic writing workshop series through the Contemporary Verse 2. You've done work with Winnipeg's Contemporary Dancers. You're also the stage producer for the Pride Festival that happened this past weekend. And you're also a great bass player. Uh, what's been your secret to staying relevant in all these elements of the art scene here in Winnipeg, and how have you made it work? Uh, I mean, for me, I'm just kind of following my curiosity, um, following my curiosity and also following my passion for community. Um, I love working uh, with emerging artists with the uh, Contemporary Verse 2's BIPOC Poetry Writing Workshop series. It's a lot of like working with folks who are kind of new to writing, connecting them with people who are, you know, a, a lot more experienced and like watching that knowledge share happen. And that's kind of something that I've that's been a thread moving through a lot of the work that I do uh, mm. as far as like organizing events. So like the Pride Winnipeg Festival, it's very similar with Cluster. It's all about connecting artists from different disciplines, from different like stages in their careers uh, and like really engaging them in, uh, you know, artistic risk taking collaboration and just like learning from each other. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I want to turn to the Cluster Festival. The first event actually happened. It happened this past Friday, May 31st. Mm -hmm. How was Hyperfem Galactica and how was Conjo? Can you talk about that event a bit? Yeah, yeah. So we had this event at the Forks Room 201. It's now called the Event Space, uh, just upstairs in the Forks Market. Um, this was a co-production with Gorge Festival, which is a queer arts festival that's, I think, in their second or third year of running. Um, and yeah, the event Hyperfem Galactica was this like incredible, lively, participatory, um, uh, I guess, like audio visual work. So Conjo is a multidisciplinary artist. They work in film, they work in music, um, they work in like experimental film and music as well. So there was uh, a lot of like interesting video collage work that was happening. Um, and the music itself was, uh, I guess, kind of like a collage of, of various like electronic music forms. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, very right. participatory, very like danceable. Yeah. It was like a, a really great start to the festival. Yeah, and just get people, get people moving around. Uh, the next event is called Pulse, uh, and it takes place at the West End Cultural Center. Can you talk about this fascinating triple feature that features Debashi uh, Shina, uh, Jason Tate, and uh, Compost? Oh yeah, this so this is a, a really exciting uh, piece for me. Just uh, I've known these artists kind of in different facets of my career as a musician and, and I guess composer, sound designer for uh, a few years now. Um, and this program of music all focuses on like the meditative qualities of sound. So 
this is a triple feature. Uh, we have Debashi Sinas from Toronto, who's like an award-winning composer and sound designer. Um, and the piece that he's presenting, Rook Strung, is this incredible quadraphonic soundscape. Quadraphonic meaning that there are going to be four different uh, sources of sound placed around the audience. So everyone gets a very unique uh, listening experience compared to, I guess, just based on where you're sitting in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's all like drone based. It's all it's kind of like structured improvisations. It's going to be really beautiful. Yeah, and and, and and part of it is improvised as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part of it's improvised. Uh, similarly with Jason Tate, um, a lot of people know Jason Tate as like the drummer for the Weaker Thans, mm -hmm. kind of like indie rock royalty from Winnipeg. A lot of people don't know that he's actually like a secret synth wizard. He loves <laughs> technology and music and combining those things together. So this is, I think, maybe a debut uh, performance of that side of his practice, which I think people will be really excited about. It's all analog synthesizers. Yeah. It's all structured improvisations. Um, I, I was reading about this, like modular and analog synthesizers. I did some work with analog synthesizers when I was in at grad school, and it's that's a... I mean, they're, it's a they're, lot. <laughs> they're, they're big. They're yeah. they're very big, yeah. and yeah, I've he sent me some photos of the works in progress and like the amount of chord spaghetti that you mm. yeah yeah <laughs> you yeah, see yeah. Is like it's it's a lot to and manipulating these sounds and these wavelengths to create these yeah. really and amazing... also in a live setting too yeah 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 it should it should be really really great and then there's uh, compost yeah uh, he's premiering this piece decomposed which mm -hmm. I gather is a multi movement pre composed work he's using electric bass drums spoken word and Fender Rhodes does he have a band with him how's that going to yeah work? so compost is actually is a band so it's a kind of Kay. it's three players uh, Justin Alcock Eric Roberts and Julian Butel um, it's mostly rhythm section they're doing live processed. Uh, electronics mm -hmm. there which will be really great um, and decomposed is a multi-movement piece that focuses on like growth and decay and uh, there'll be really interesting projections that, uh, behind them pr provided by Joel Penner who's a local filmmaker wow. um, an award-winning filmmaker actually uh, does a lot of like I think it's it's not stop motion but it's um it's that type of video where you're you're recording something over a very long period of time. Time lapse. Yes, time lapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a time lapse video of he he does a lot of like time lapse video for like of nature, and I think he was even in like a he did like a segments for a documentary that Will Smith did like the oh, wow. voiceover for. I, <laughs> <laughs> but there's a great documentary that he did called Rot, spelt. Uh, W R O U G H T. <laughs> um, that kind of follows this like time lapse. Yeah, and I, I can just imagine what this is all going to be like at the West End Cultural Center. Yeah. It's like, going to be such a great venue, and then with the uh, images projected up on the screen, and then yeah, the yeah, four we're we're actually bringing the whole thing down on the floor too, so that people have a much more of an intimate experience, and we'll have the projections a lot closer. You can kind of see what everybody's doing, so. Just to bring the audience more into yeah, the yeah. process, too, is yeah, the goal. Be more part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next concert is called Parallel Motions. It's happening on Saturday, June 8th in room uh, 201 at the Forks. Uh, uh, what can you tell us about the performers and the works that are going to be presented at this show? Uh, well, we have a trio of local performers, um, Zoria Arrow, J. Riley Hill, who goes by Means Path. That's kind of like his... Uh, digital com uh, electronic composer name, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Domo 11, Dominique Lemoyne, who you would hear in uh, the band A La Mode, among uh, many other bands in the city. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're quite a prolific collaborator. And uh, they're doing a symphony of self, and apparently it's a four-part structured improvisation mm -hmm. for movement, sound, and live stream. How's that going to work? Uh, well, Okay, so we're going to have some, like, a, a projector, a screen. There's going to be a camera that's manipulated live and then, like, these soundscapes. So it's it'll be kind of done a bit in the round. So audiences will also have that really up-close type experience. Mm. Um, also on that program, we have Olivia Short uh, premiering new work uh, that was made in collaboration with Jamie Black. Olivia Short is a saxophonist, composer, uh, musician, multidisciplinary artist, based out of Toronto. Um, they're they're incredible. They're incredible. I, yeah. And Jamie Black 
is a local artist here, a uh, multidisciplinary artist as well. Um, and she, I think, is maybe most well-known uh, to your listeners as, like, the, the, the person who started the Red Dress Project. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And it's described as taking audiences on a journey through uncharted sonic realms. Yeah. Yeah, saxophone, electronics, video, it's all sorts. It's, it's fantastic. The last sort of show of Cluster is this concert uh, reframe. Uh, it's happening Sunday, June 9th, again at the West End Cultural Center. Um, I gather it explores the sound world of prepared piano and electronics. What can you tell us about this? Um, well, we have, so it's a bit of a triple feature again. So there's a couple duos. We have uh, Everett Hopfner and Madeline Hildebrand, two incredible pianists in the city, presenting a series of uh piano repertoire, but also keyboard repertoire. And they're, they'll be playing like Fender Rhodes. There's a toy piano. They're like really mm. taking it all across the map of keyboard repertoire. Uh, one piece that I'm really excited about is uh, a piece by um, uh, Katie Sopper, which is called Sensitive Spot. And that will have kind of like a surround situation for the audience mm. as well. So with that piece, it's the same piece uh, played and recorded 12 times. Each recording is played on a different speaker. And uh, then the pianist plays that same piece kind of all at once. So it kind of, you get this like really interesting phasing that happens. There's like, you know, you're playing with themes with like time and precision. Mm. And it, I think it's gonna be really sonically yeah. striking. If any of our listeners are familiar with Steve Reich's uh, phase music, is it sort of similar along those lines or? Uh, I, I'm, I wouldn't say it's quite, the same as mm. Steve Reich, but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it it, it, it follows a thread for and sure. And have you heard uh, about the prepared piano aspect of it? Like, uh, you know what? That's going to be a surprise for me as well. I'm letting them kind of take the reins with this, and I mean, that's kind of my goal as an artistic director is to like really, really give the artists like free range to express themselves and take risks and mm. invite audiences to be as curious as they are in this process. And for our listeners, prepared piano is, you're literally sticking things in the piano on the strings and it creates a really sort of wonderful percussive mm -hmm. uh, uh, sound. Uh, and then you've got cellist, uh, help me out with the pronunciation of the oh, name. Oh yeah, Nathaniel Felicitas. Mm -hmm. um, Nathaniel is like probably one of the most in demand like session cellists in the city. Uh, she's played with tons and tons of folks like recorded with Rain Hamilton and J.P. Ho, Slow Leaves, tours extensively. Mm -hmm. um, so people often hear her in kind of that collaborative context. And this is one of the first like solo shows that she's doing with cello, electronics. She's done like voice recordings for it. This oh, is wow. going to be a really special piece, especially for folks who know Nathaniel really well. Yeah, fantastic. And then uh, also on, on that concert, you've got Sarah Jo Kirsch and Madeline Hildebrand. Mm -hmm. uh, they performed together. I know they did the Ygre tour together, yes, but they apparently they've never performed together for, with Cluster, right? Yeah, they've all, they've performed for Cluster just in separate occasions. So mm -hmm. this is the first time that they'll be doing it duo. And I'm really excited for that. Uh, there's some, yeah, it, it's going to be quite a range in terms of the repertoire. Um, mm. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, and then uh, on June 7th, there's also a great ex exhibition happening. It's called Environmental Machine Shop. It's happening at the Poolside Gallery, and it encourages visitors to reimagine their relationship with the Red River. It's an art installation. It sounds really great. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, the Environment Machine Shop, which is by Michael Lucen Q, uh, invites uh Part participants, spectators to come in and like actually touch the works, which is not something that you're usually allowed to do mm -hmm. when there's an installation piece. It's usually very hands off. But um, essentially, he's built these sculptures that are interactive, uh, that use samples from the Red River, water samples from the Red River, and kind of turn these machines are quasi instruments. So you can play around with them and like really interact with oh, cool. with the waterway in the way that in ways that we don't normally do and kind of like consider the ways that we relate to the environment around us. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, spe yeah especially uh, with the Red River being in the news uh, with, yes, yeah. what, what happened with it earlier mm -hmm. this year. 
there's also a couple of events happening at the Forks uh, this weekend. There is a graphic scoring for kids and, and the movement and movement and sound uh, with Weather Parade Theater. Uh, mm-hmm. Are these meant for kids? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is kind of our first foray into kids programming. Um, I've always thought that, especially when it comes to kind of contemporary and experimental music, children might just be the most primed audiences for it because they have they they enter spaces with very little like preconceptions of what things should be like because mm-hmm. i mean they haven't been on this earth for very long yeah. so their the imagination is there the curiosity is there there's not as much self-consciousness totally. so th- yeah i'm really excited to see uh what what these little composers are going to come up with and and especially with the dance and movement folks weather parade dance theater has for a number of years now been engaging uh g- engaging people from across ages into like this intergenerational kind of like movement based um co-creation process mm. so getting folks into like co- uh choreographing and thinking about their bodies and performing for each other's this is just going to be really great. I'm super excited. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. It's sort of exploring that idea of, you know, kids just being the blank slate. Absolutely. And, and just they Yeah, and I, I think this whatever. is how we keep this music and, like, this kind of, like, tradition moving forward. Like, taking it maybe out of tradition and moving it into just, like, practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're doing it. Absolutely. It's alive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the Cluster uh, Festival this year sounds so cool and interesting. I'm going to wrap things up uh, by asking, where can people go to find out more and get tickets and festival passes? Yeah, if you are interested in getting a ticket or just learning more, head to www.clusterfestival.com. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram at, at Cluster Festival. Fantastic. Ashley, this has just been fantastic having you and seeing you again. The Cluster Festival 2024 sounds amazing. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and talk to me today. And it was just great to catch up with you. Yeah, absolutely.